love from Seoul? Yes, making ramen looks quite complicated, but not every ramen needs to be complicated. I mean, if you have just 15 minutes, you can make the perfect bowl of ramen. But don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about instant ramen. I'm talking about a proper bowl of Japanese ramen. So if you ever wanted to make ramen at any point in your life, it's time to give it a shot. All right, are you guys ready? Let's get started. Today, we are making shoyu ramen, one of the most delicious Japanese ramens. Compared to tonkotsu ramen, which takes a long time to cook, this is such a simple ramen that you can try at home. The taste? Don't worry about it. Once you try this recipe, you don't go to a ramen restaurant anymore. For this, you will need ramen, green onion, ginger, pork belly, and some eggs. Actually, I wanted to share the 5 minute version, but without chashu and soft boiled eggs, we can call it ramen, right? So let's just invest 10 more minutes. You won't regret it, I promise. First of all, let's make some soft boiled eggs. Don't worry, as always, it's gonna be so easy. Fill your pot with 6 cups of water and bring it to a boil. Once it starts to boil, reduce the heat to low and gently lower 6 large eggs. Once you place them all in, give it a few stirs so that we can keep the yolks centered. Now we're gonna cook these for 7 minutes. And when time's up, shock them in ice water and wait until they've cooled down. Otherwise, it's gonna continue to cook and you never get the beautifully cooked soft boiled eggs. This is very important. This time, let's make some chashu. If you skip this step, it's gonna be way simpler and easier. But you don't wanna miss this beautiful thing, right? That's why I brought this super simple version. You're welcome. First, let's make the sauce. In a small container, add 1 tablespoon of soy sauce, half a tablespoon of oyster sauce, 1 tablespoon of mirin, half a tablespoon of sugar, half a tablespoon of corn syrup, a quarter teaspoon of dark soy sauce, 1 teaspoon of minced garlic, half a teaspoon of grated ginger, 2 tablespoons of water, and mix it. So simple, right? But you wanna make it taste good like the one from restaurants? Then bring that bad boy over here. Totally optional, but let me add a pinch because this bad boy makes everything taste better. Now get your pan over medium heat. Once it gets nice and hot, add half a tablespoon of cooking oil and place some pork belly. Once they turn a beautiful golden brown on both sides, pour the sauce you made and gently simmer for another 3 minutes over medium low heat. What? You wanna get that smoky charred flavor? Then take out your blowtorch or Caesar. Trust me, this will take it to the next level. This time, we're gonna make some aromatic oil. Shoyu ramen without aromatic oil is like Thanksgiving without turkey. Yes, it's that important. So don't you ever skip this step. First, chop some green onions into small pieces. As always, more green onion, more delicious. So be super generous with this. Next, grab a small knob of ginger and finely chop it. I wanna say like, if you don't have a ginger, you can't skip it. But this bad boy will give a delightful fragrance to your ramen. Now get yourself a small pan or saucepan. Add 5 tablespoons of lard and heat it over medium low heat. Here, some of you might say, Aaron, I don't have that lard. What should I do? That's okay, you can just use vegetable oil. I wouldn't say that's the best, but our love, green onion, will take care of everything. So don't worry about it. Once the lard is melted nice and hot, add 40 grams of green onions and ginger. What? What about the rest of the green onions? Good question. We're gonna use them for garnish. So don't worry about it. After 3 to 4 minutes, remove it from the heat and strain out your ginger and green onions. And there you have it. Your super simple aromatic oil. Now let's make tare. In a small container, add 4 tablespoons of soy sauce, half a teaspoon of sugar, 1 teaspoon of mirin, a generous pinch of MSG, and give that a good mix. Couldn't be any easier, right? This is why I said it only takes minutes. Last but not least, let's make some broth. Normally, we're supposed to make chicken stock and mix it with some dashi broth. But we're not opening a restaurant, we just wanna casually enjoy a nice bowl of ramen at home, right? If this is you, combine 4 cups of water, 1 tablespoon of chicken bouillon powder, 1 and a half teaspoon of hondashi, and mix it. Trust me, this is gonna be enough. 
Maybe it's better. What? You can't trust me? Then let's see what happens to our taste tester in a minute. Once it's well combined, put it on a gentle heat. Here, you don't want to boil or simmer. I mean, you just want to get it warm. That's it. While that's going, let's prep the noodles. Add your noodles to boiling water and cook according to the package instructions. What? You can get this kind of ramen noodles? Don't worry about it. You could also use other noodles. Even instant ramen noodles would be fine. No problem at all. Once they're cooked through, take them out and shake off the excess water. Here, make sure to get rid of as much moisture as possible so that it doesn't affect the taste of the broth. That's why people in ramen restaurants always shake off their noodles like a drummer. Now get yourself a bowl and let's start off with the tare. Since everyone's tastes are a little different, let's start with 1 tablespoon. Keep adding 1 tablespoon of aromatic oil along with half of the broth and stir everything together. And then give it a little taste and add more tare if you need. Once it tastes perfect to you, add your drained noodles. Here, if you lift it up a few times and kind of lay it down like this, your ramen will look more gorgeous. And people will think you're a ramen master or something. Pretty good tip, right? Once that's done, top it off with some chashu, green onions, soft boiled eggs, and some sliced fish cakes, which are totally optional. Last but not least, add some dried seaweed. That's it. It's incredibly easy, right? For information, I just showed you the basic toppings for shoyu ramen. But if there's anything you want to add in, go ahead and use it and make your own style. That'll be more fantastic. Alright, let's call our taste tester. Flair. <laughs> Show you means soy sauce. So it's basically soy sauce based ramen. Do I know some Japanese? No. I only know arigatou gozaimasu. So, arigatou gozaimasu. Let me taste it. <laughs> I'm sorry. 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 Bye bye! Bye bye! Let's try the broth first! Ready? Mmm! 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 깔끔하다. 음. 그리고 이 오일에서 오는 그 향이 너무 좋아. 뭔지 모르겠는데 너무 좋아. 음. 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 사실 솔직히 말하면 소유라면 그 간장 맛이 너무 진해서 솔직히 나한테 조금 짠 느낌 있었거든. 근데 요거는 지금 딱내 입맛에 맞다. 음. 안 짜고 맛있는데? 음. 음. 이거는 근데 뼈를 오랜 시간 우려가지고 내는 그런 육수가 아니니까 온전히 육수 자체가 간장에서 좌우가 되는 거잖아. 간장은 좋은 걸 써야겠네. 비싼 걸 써야겠네. 야? <웃음> yeah? This is the key. <웃음> 어, 맛있다 이거. 음. 계속 국물만 먹게 되네. 빨리 먹어야겠다. 딴 거. <웃음> Ready! 음! 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 국물이랑 면이랑 따로 놀지 않고 되게 맛있다. 음, 면이 육수의 그 향긋함을 온전히 흡수해가지고 너무 맛있는데? 음! 부들부들! 좋다! 면의 그 부드러움에 대파의 그 향긋함과 아삭함 들어가니까 진짜 왜 대파를 좋아하는지 왜, 왜 그렇게 대파를 찬양하는지 알것 같아. <웃음> This time, let's try one of the beauties of ramen. 차슈! 촉촉하게 한번 더. 육수에. 간다! 확실히 크게 한입 가득 먹으니까 좀 만족스럽긴 하다. 훨씬 맛있다. 아니 이게 뭐야? 이게 뭐 이름은 모르겠는데 너무 귀여운 거 아니야? 고리에다 딱 놓으면 볼터치한 것 같은 느낌? <웃음> 그렇지 않아? 삐로 같은데. 삐로? <웃음> 먹어보겠어. 
Let's try it. Mmm, mmm, mm. You know what? I've been waiting for this. The soft bold. Let's see. So beautiful as usual. Ready? Mmm, 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 <웃음> 음, 음, 아무튼 진짜 나한테는 간이 퍼펙트해서 일단 너무 좋네 오늘은 물 많이 안 마셔도 되겠어 땡큐 <웃음> 아리가또 고자이마스 <웃음> Let me guess You're getting sick and tired of eating the same fried chicken Over and over Then you came to the right place Simple ingredients, not many cooking steps, and it doesn't even need any complicated cooking techniques. Trust me, this is gonna be the easiest and crispiest fried chicken of your life. All right, are you guys ready? Let's get started. Today, we are making karage, one of the best fried chickens of all time. Although there are so many great fried chickens out there, we can't talk about fried chicken without this one. Yes, it's that good. So why don't you get out of the same old routine and give this a try. I'm pretty sure this is gonna be your new favorite. For this, you will need some chicken thighs. That's it. You don't buy it, then just bring the courage to deep fry at home. That's all you need. Deep frying at home is kind of annoying, but trust me. Freshly made fried chicken will give you the best experience of your life. Alright, let's prep the chicken first. Get yourself 600 grams of boneless chicken thighs and cut them into nice big chunks like Claire's Bite. Because they're gonna shrink a lot when you fry it. So if you cut them too small, you're gonna get teeny tiny pieces of chicken which is not juicy at all. So please cut them into nice big chunks. And depending on your preference, you can remove the skin or replace it with chicken breast. No problem at all. But if you wanna enjoy the classic Japanese karage, I highly recommend using chicken thighs with the skin on. That way, it's gonna be so juicy and flavorful. This time, let's make the marinade, which is the most important step for Japanese fried chicken. In a large mixing bowl, put 3 tablespoons of soy sauce, 3 tablespoons of mirin, 1 teaspoon of sugar, 1 teaspoon of minced garlic, 1 teaspoon of minced ginger, half a cup of water, and give it a good mix. Now some of you might ask, Aaron, aren't you supposed to use tashi, Japanese soup stock? Yes, that's right. You really know how to make Papa proud. If I were your teacher, I gave you an A. It is true that we need to use tashi broth, but we're not gonna sell this fried chicken, right? So let's take out our secret weapon, hondashi, and add a half teaspoon of it. Trust me, this small amount of hondashi will take you to a Japanese restaurant. Now into the marinade, let's add our chicken and give that a good mix. Cover it with plastic wrap and pop it in the fridge for at least 30 minutes or overnight. That's it. While they're having a great nap in the fridge, let's make a simple side dish that will boost up our chicken. Take some leftover cabbage out of the fridge and slice it as thin as you can. If you're not confident with your knife skills, so worried about getting big enormous pieces of cabbage like your finger, using a vegetable peeler is a good option because the thinner, the better. Once you're done slicing, soak them in cold water because this will help to reduce the bitterness in your cabbage and it will stay crisp and fresh. If you're not a big fan of cabbage, this is the way to go. Now for the dressing, grind 3 tablespoons of toasted sesame seeds. If you don't have a mortar and pestle, you can simply crush them with your hands or anything that works for you. The point is, you gotta break it down to release a lot more flavor, that's the key. Once that's done, add 1 tablespoon of sugar, 5 tablespoons of cupy mayo, 1 tablespoon of vinegar, 1 teaspoon of soy sauce, half a tablespoon of toasted sesame oil, a pinch of salt, and mix it. That's it. So simple, right? Alright, let's get back to our chicken. Put them in a strainer and let them drain. Meanwhile, let's take out a tray and add a good amount of potato starch. Here, using potato starch is the best option, but don't worry about it. You could also use cornstarch, no problem at all. Now to the potato starch, let's add a splash of water, but not too much. And using a fork, give it a good mix, and sort of press it down. 
As you mix, you will notice it creates a little bit of lumps, which looks like coarse sea salt. And this is exactly what we're looking for because they're gonna add some really nice crunch to our chicken. Now grab a piece of chicken and dredge it in the potato starch. Make sure you coat it all over. That's all you need. Couldn't be any easier, right? Once you've done that, let them sit on a wire rack and give them some privacy for about 5 minutes. That way, the outside dries up a little bit and they will become more crispy when they're deep fried. Meanwhile, let's heat up some oil to 170 degrees Celsius or 340 degrees Fahrenheit. Once it reaches the temperature, carefully add in your chicken, one piece at a time, and give it about 2-3 minutes. Here, what's really important is, if you add the chicken all at once, it will drop the old temperature too quickly. So you may end up with some greasy and soggy chicken in the end. So please do this in batches, like 2 or 3 batches will be perfect. Once they get crispy on the outside, remove from the oil and let them rest on a wire rack for about 1 minute. During the time, some of the moisture is gonna come out and make your chicken a little soggy. But don't worry about it. We're gonna fry for another minute and get the most crispy and delicious fried chicken. Yeah, that's right. This double fry technique will bring that amazing crispiness in your mouth. It may only take a few seconds to change their color. So rather than counting the time, focus on the color. When you see the chicken turns beautifully golden brown like this, that's the time to take them out. Or you might end up with some deep fried chocolate at the end. Alright, let's take them out and drain on a wire rack. And then nicely place them on a serving plate along with some cabbage, cherry tomato, and lemon. Of course you could serve it now, but I think it tastes way better with some Kewpie mayo. So I'm gonna add some here. Last but not least, let's finish it with a little bit of shichimi togarashi. Alright, it's done. Let's coat our taste tester. Claire? Wow, it smells heavenly. <gasps> As you guys know, I love eating like a cave woman. Grab a huge piece of chicken and take a big bite. So good, right? But sometimes I like to eat it gracefully. And today is the day. So I'm gonna try with chopsticks. <laughs> Let's squeeze it. Ooh. Ready? Mm. Mmm. 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 This time, I'm gonna try with mayonnaise. Ready? 우아하게 먹는다고 했지만 한 입에 넣어야겠다. 갑니다. <웃음> Ready? 음, 맛있다. 음. 아까 건 조금 가벼웠다면 이 마요네즈랑 먹으니까 고소함도 추가되면서 훨씬 더 묵직하니 맛있네. 음, 매력 있다, 매력 있어. Just for the tip, if you don't like mayonnaise, just sprinkle a little bit of salt. It's gonna be fantastic too. Mexican chung jumbi ka Do you have some beer? Hello, beer ji. You don't want to say goodbye yet? Neither do I. So let's make another amazing Japanese rice bowl with some leftover karage. Don't worry about it. As always, it's gonna be easy and awesome. For this, you will need cabbage, green onion, and some leftover fried chicken. That's it. But if you wanna make it a little bit more fancy and need some photos for your Instagram, then bring some soft boiled eggs. But today, I'm gonna keep it simple and skip that part. But if you wanna know how to make the perfect soft boiled eggs, check out my egg rice bowl video. You're gonna love it so much. Alright, let's make some sauce for our rice bowl. First, chop up some green onions and put them in a container. Is it too much? Don't worry about it. More green onion, more delicious. Keep adding 1 tablespoon of soy sauce, half a tablespoon of sugar, 1 and a half tablespoons of vinegar, half a tablespoon of mirin, 3 tablespoons of water, 1 teaspoon of toasted sesame oil, a pinch of hondashi, and give it a good mix. So simple, right? But the taste is gonna be fantastic. Alright, we are set. Let's put it all together. Get yourself a bowl with some hot rice and then some sauce we made. The sauce is for two servings, so let's save some for later. And then on top of the rice, add some thinly sliced cabbage. Lastly, place some karage on top of it. How much? Just as much as you want. 
make your own castle. What? You wanna make it more pretty? Then add some Japanese pickled ginger and lemon. Trust me, these bad boys will take it to the next level. Last but not least, finish it off with some green onions, mayonnaise, and Japanese seven spice. All right, it's done. Let's see how it tastes. Claire? I didn't know we can make this way. Let's give it a try. I'm super curious. Okay, squeeze it. Oh, a little sh. I saw this. Mmm. Just like this. Cheers. Mmm. 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 Sauce is Sauce is so much. Mmm. Sauce is so much. Mmm. Mmm. 듬뿍 넣겠어. 아 여기 파 들어간 거 진짜 맛있네. <웃음> 한번 더. 음, 음. 소스가 진짜 근데 신의 한 수야. 전체를 다 아우르면서 뭔가 하나로 쫙 만들어주는 딱 이렇게 중심을 잘 잡아주는 그런 맛이야. 이 정도로 기대 안 했어. 사실 뭐 남은 치킨이니까 이런 생각으로 했는데 이거 맛있는데? Who would imagine this is made of leftover chicken? So good! So good! 너무 맛있다! 음! Do you like fried chicken? What about curry? Fried chicken? Good! Curry? Nice! Then what if I combine those two? I know it's hard to believe, but it's a real thing. Alright, let's get started. Today, we are making katsu curry, ultra crispy fried chicken with nice and creamy Japanese curry. Is there anything you wouldn't love? No, impossible, but you might think it's difficult to make. But don't worry about it. As always, with me, nothing's gonna be a problem. So buckle up, let's make the curry first. For this, you will need onion, carrot, potato, and Japanese curry mix. Of course, I could make it completely from scratch with various spices and that could be more delicious. But let me give you two reasons why I don't do that. First, you don't want to buy all this stuff and I'm pretty sure you're not gonna use it again after this recipe. No? Is that just me? Then sorry about that. Second, getting one of these will be a lot cheaper, but it doesn't mean we have to compromise the flavor because I won't let that happen. So it's your choice, expensive and complicated one or something quick and delicious. Alright, let's prep the onion first. Slice 4 large onions as thinly as you can. Just like when you make a French onion soup, we're gonna be sauteing these onions and they're gonna take a little while to cook. So try to cut these as thinly as you can. Otherwise, it can take more than 3 hours. And if that happens, I'm not responsible. Next, get yourself a carrot and 3 potatoes. And then cut them into nice big chunks. Now some of you might want to ask, Aaron, aren't they supposed to be pretty? I think they should float in the curry like a stew. I'm so glad you brought that up. Today, we're not gonna make that typical Japanese curry, which looks like a little stew. We're gonna make a really creamy and velvety curry, which means we're gonna puree this later. So don't worry about the shape. Now take out your pot, add 3 tablespoons of oil and heat that over medium heat. Once it gets nice and hot, add all the onions and saute for 40 minutes or until deep caramelized. During the time, if it's likely to burn, it's okay to reduce the heat to low or add a small amount of water. Don't worry about it, cooking is not math. That's totally fine. Meanwhile, in another wok or pan, add 1 tablespoon of cooking oil and place it over medium heat. Once that's hot, add all the carrots and potatoes and let them cook for about 10 minutes or until nice and golden brown. This little detail will add a ton of flavor and that's gonna take your curry to the next level. Once your onions are beautifully deep caramelized, add 3 tablespoons of tomato paste, 1 tablespoon of cumin powder and let that cook for about 1 minute. Keep adding 8 cups of water, 1.5 tablespoons of chicken bouillon powder, 1 tablespoon of soy sauce, 1 tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, potatoes, carrots, and give it a good stir. Cover with the lid and let that simmer for about 30 minutes over medium-low heat. When time's up, remove it from the heat and add 220 grams of Japanese curry mix, 2 tablespoons of unsalted butter, and give it a good stir until it's well combined. 
and take an immersion blender and blend this until it's nice and smooth. What? You don't have this? Don't worry about it. You could also use a blender, but if you do it when it's hot, it's gonna explode like a grenade. So please wait until it's completely cooled down. I told you. So if that happens, I'm not responsible. Now all you need to do is put it on a gentle heat. And there you have it, your creamy Japanese curry. This time, let's work on the chicken katsu. When the curry meets this ultimate crispy chicken cutlet, trust me, it's gonna be fantastic. For this, you will need chicken, AP flour, eggs, and some panko breadcrumbs. Now some of you might wanna ask, Aaron, can I skip that panko? Sadly, my answer is no, because this will bring that amazing crispiness in your mouth. All right, let's prep the chicken. To be honest, I kind of prefer chicken thighs, but today, I think I have to use chicken breast because of someone. If you're married, listen. Happy wife, happy life. But don't get me wrong, it's not because I'm afraid of Claire. True story. If you look at your chicken breast, it's not even in thickness, which means when it's deep fried, some parts might get overcooked, but others might get undercooked. So let's make it even. How? Just put it in a plastic bag and pound it up with a meat mallet, saucepan, wine bottle, or anything that works for you. But don't make this poor little thing into mush. It's not your axe. Once it gets nice and flat, season both sides with salt and pepper, but not too much, because we're gonna have with amazing curry anyhow. Now for the breading station, take out some trays and fill them with flour, a couple of eggs, and some panko breadcrumbs. Grab a piece of chicken breast and coat it in the flour. Make sure it gets all around and shake off the excess. Move on to the beaten eggs and then in the breadcrumbs. Here, you need to cover it a good amount of breadcrumbs and gently press it down so that every single side is totally coated with panko. Otherwise, you might end up with some naked chicken breast that nobody wants. All right, the chicken is ready to go. Let's get cooking. Fill the wok or pot with enough oil and heat it to 170 degrees Celsius or 340 degrees Fahrenheit. Once it reaches the temperature, add in the chicken and cook for about 6 to 8 minutes. Here, do not overcrowd the pot and do this in batches. Like one or two at a time would be perfect. Otherwise, it will lower the oil temperature too quickly, which means you can get that ultimate crispy chicken katsu at the end. Once your chicken is beautifully golden brown and crispy, take it out and let it rest on a cooling rack. And then just repeat with the remaining chicken pieces. That's it. While that's resting, let's chop some green onion for garnish. And then carefully slice your beautifully cooked chicken katsu. Alright, everything is ready. Let's put it all together. Get yourself a plate and add a bowl of cooked rice. And then pour in some of our gorgeous curry and place the chicken on top. Of course, you could serve it now, but if you want to feel like you're eating at a Japanese restaurant, add some Japanese pickled scallions and ginger. Trust me, they're really gonna boost up the flavor. Last but not least, garnish with green onion. Then our katsu curry is done. Alright, let's go to our taste tester. Claire. Ooh, it looks so beautiful. <gasps> wow, I'm so good at it. Chicken katsu, curry. <gasps> 카레가 뭔가 덩어리지지 않고 되게 매끈매끈하니 엄청 고급진 느낌이 딱 생긴다. 뭐부터 먹어봐야 될지 모르겠는데 그래도 커리부터 먹어보겠다. I'm super excited. Let's try. 너무 부드러워서 뭔가 수프 먹는 그런 느낌이야. 그러면 이제 메인 이벤트로 가야지. 이놈 큰 놈으로 가겠다. Mmm, ready? Mmm, mmm, wow. This is this is. Mmm, mmm. Soup is like so soft. And the bread is 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 so soft. And the 그리고 이 조합 누가 생각했는지 모르겠는데 카레랑 너무 잘 어울려. 약간 카레 자체가 약간은 그 매콤한 맛이 약간 있잖아. 그게 그 느끼할 수도 있을 만한 그 부분을 확잘 잡아주는 느낌? 그런 느낌이야. 그리고 그 바삭한 치킨 카츠랑 부드러운 아주 매끄러운 카레가 약간은 대조가 되면서 너무 식감이 재밌다. 와 기술인데? 음. This time let me try with rice. 카렌 밥에 빠지면 안 되지. 와, here we go. Let's try. 
약간 음 너무 맛있잖아 나 원래 돈가스 같은 것도 이렇게 눅눅해지는 거 싫어가지고 카츠동도 별로 안 좋아했었잖아 근데 이거는 파리 위에 놨는데 전혀 쏘게 하지가 않네 진짜 이건 그냥 바삭하면 온전하게 유지가 되네 막 일부러 푹 담글 필요가 없는 거 같아 위에는 바삭하게 유지시키고 아래 카레랑 같이 샥 먹는 게 그게 포인트인 거 같아 It is super delicious so I strongly recommend this But if you still hesitate to try this because it sounds like a too much work for you How about making the first day curry day Second day chicken katsu day Third day put it all together and enjoy the chicken katsu curry day You will thank yourself later So good! Hehehehe <laughs>